Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Uh, Cornell McCrory, capital res lowercase. Not the all cap, sir. Which legally denotes okay. corporation. Well, it's used to denote consistency when keeping a public record of your stupidity. Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we have part one of what'll probably be three or four videos covering a pretty serious and wild sovereign citizen trial. So let's begin. Thank, Thank you, you sir. I'm not the typist around here, sir, so we're going to go with it the way it's spelled. Can I, can I, may I please address the court, sir? Sir, I'm sure your counsel would suggest that you not do that, um, but you, ha you have a right to do that if you want to over your counsel's very solid legal advice. Mr. McCreary did not want us to represent him. Um, we tried to represent him. We would like to help him represent him. I would like to represent myself, sir. And that Under Michigan Constitution, Section 3, Article 13, okay. represent myself, Judge. Well, you know what we say on this channel. He who represents himself in court has a crayon muncher and a smooth brain. All right, sir. Uh, it appears that you uh, have a desire to represent yourself. Let me just ask you a few questions. You're aware that either right now or at any point while this case is pending, you can have the assistance of counsel should you so desire. Are you aware of that? I am aware, sir. All right. And it's your decision at this time to proceed without counsel. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Appropriate for signed under Michigan Constitution 1963 out of 613, sir. I love when sovereign citizens cite laws and statutes as an argument for why they shouldn't have to follow laws and statutes. Nevertheless, it does make my job of proving them wrong a whole lot easier. As Michigan Constitution Title VI Section 13 is on screen and delineates the responsibilities and jurisdictions of the circuit court. I believe what he is insinuating is that he wants this to be removed from the district courts to the circuit courts, and Title VI, Section 13, gives them that right to do so. However, 613 gives the circuit court a supervisory and general control over the inferior courts, and mentions nothing of a mandatory change of venue just because the defendant requests it. All right. I am very uh, uh, Hold on, sir. Hold on. While you do have a, a, a right to represent yourself, you do not have the right to talk over me, sir. So let me say a few more things. You do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You also have the right to an attorney, which we've just discussed. And if you cannot afford an attorney, the court will provide one for you. In fact, we have several attorneys here today who are very capable. Uh, of course, you can uh, turn down that uh, constitutional right. And it appears that that's what you're doing. Uh, let's see. You're charged here with one count of misdemeanor assault or assault and battery. Maximum penalty is 90 days and or $500. And of course, going to enter a not guilty plea on your behalf, sir. We're going to hear a little few words from the prosecutor, and then it'll be your opportunity to speak if you so desire, Mr. Prosecutor. Thanks, Your Honor. Again, Steve Vincent on behalf of the people. The complaining witness, Your Honor, in this case is a police officer. Apparently, during prisoner transport, the defendant walked past the police officer uh, who was in and around the area while the defendant was being escorted to the holding cell. And the defendant um, took it upon himself to lean towards the police officer and spit on him. Uh, as a result of the defendant's actions, the people will be asking for a $1,000 cash bond. Mr. McCreary, anything you want to say as to bond, sir? I do caution you not to discuss the alleged facts of the case, but uh, it's up to you. Well, I first would like to establish personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction. This is a structural error, Your Honor. Under MCL 767.24, Judge, this statute of limitations has told this is a structural error. This is prosecutorial misconduct under Michigan court rule. I mean, Michigan rules of professional conduct. 
3.8, sir. So MCL 767.24 outlines what is an indictable offense in Michigan. There are many parts to it, so you're going to have to be more specific. Now let me let you in on a little legal secret. The argument that you're going to be making as a defense is going to be shit on by MCL 767.24 at the end of this video. You also bring up an alleged prosecutorial misconduct under the Michigan Rules of Professional Conduct without citing exactly how the prosecutor is overstepping their bounds other than to say that you don't believe that they should be prosecuting you and the entire section is being violated because they disagree. I was in the Department of Corrections from I believe it was January. I mean, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I know it was 2002. I was released in August of 16th. Paperwork, everything. I've been filing complaints against the prosecutor's office. Uh, Kim Worthy, where a judge heard it on appeal. Kirsten Frank Kelly. It's been crimes against me by the prosecutor's office. And I would like to move for a change of venue where it's clearly documented, Your Honor. And the statute of limitations has told, I don't know nothing about this case. Why wasn't I processed or liens checked before I was released from prison? I've been home six and a half years, Your Honor. This is a crime in violation of misconduct in office MCL 750.505, also 18 USC 241, 242 per the federal statute. Embler versus Patchman, he does not, the prosecutor does not have absolute immunity. Judge, and I exercise the common law. Heard that I, I demand that this case be heard under the common law, Judge. I've been home six and a half years. No threat to anyone. I've been working. I have had five children since I've been home. I'm a grandfather. I have two grandchildren, one on the way. And I've been trying my best. And people have been calling, making false complaints on me, and it's well documented. I've tried to press charges. And the prosecutor won't do anything. This is selective prosecution, uh, vindictive prosecution as well. It's all documented, sir. And I ask that this case, I would like again to challenge personal subject matter and territorial jurisdiction. Under MCL 767.24, the statute of limitations have told. They have been notified of any pending warrants or anything else while I was incarcerated before I was released. I've been home six and a half years, haven't been a threat to the community, haven't been a threat to anyone. People have made false complaints on me and I filed police report, uh, reports with the uh, Department of Justice, the FBI, the uh, state police and DPD, the 10th precinct. And it's documented and they don't wanna let me press charges. This is selective okay. prosecution, Judge. Kinda sounds to me like you're butthurt because the prosecutor doesn't want to prosecute the previous prosecutor for prosecuting you in the past. They make a cream for that. It says Bueller on it. That I mean, uh, you can shove this cream up your ass. Thank so I you, asked sir, for for your motion. All right, motion to dismiss is denied. Motion to dismiss is denied. I don't have the authority to dismiss the case. The issues you raise, sir, are more properly uh, brought before the judge who's going to hear this case, which will be Judge Bryant. And you can raise those uh, issues at your next hearing. Uh, what I will do at this time is uh, set bond as follows. Council, what was your request? We were requesting $1,000 of cash as a result of the actions of this case. Okay. I object. Um, he just used the house and he's being convicted, Your Honor. I object. Sir, do you have do you have any financial means with which to post a bond of, of any type today? I have uh, three hundred dollars on one credit card and I have forty dollars on another card, sir. And I'll be more than All happy right. to give you whatever I have. I've been trying, Judge. I have tenants. I have my home. I have kids. I need to get home. I haven't been a threat to the community. People have been lying on me, Judge. And it's well documented, okay. man. And I put myself on personal court. And again, I uh, object under UCC 1-308. I reserve my rights not to be compelled to perform under any contract or commercial agreement that I did not enter into knowingly, voluntarily, and intentionally. And that would be relevant if you were dealing with a commercial contract of any kind. But you're dealing with a statutory criminal matter, not a commercial one. So the UCC doesn't apply regardless of which section or code that you cite. Furthermore, I do not accept the liability of the contracts. Also, I would like to uh, cite a case to the court, Foy versus City of Berea. 58 federal sir, third sir, I don't mean to I don't mean to cut you off but I I do not have the authority to dismiss as you requested 
So it, it doesn't do you any good to give me all the citations. You can raise all of that with Judge Bryant on your next court date, okay? So court's going to set bond at uh, $1,000, 10%. That'll be $100 to you, sir, which uh, you've indicated is an affordable bond. I got my card. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. If for whatever reason you don't post, you'll have an affordable bond uh, hearing tomorrow morning. But if you do post, you don't have to worry about tomorrow morning. Your next court date will be in front of Judge Bryant on June the 7th uh, here in 36th District Court for a pretrial. And I'm sure that she will entertain your motions at that time. All right. So that's the end of the... Wait, did you say he keeps going? How lovely. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. Um, I would, I would like to state this, that the prosecutor is under oath under Article 6, Section 3. Right now, they're violating their oath. There is a case called U.S. versus Will. When they have jurisdiction to act and they don't act, and if they don't have jurisdiction, they act as treason against the U.S. Constitution, sir. Under the common law, okay. I ask that you uh, send this matter to the uh, Michigan Attorney Grievance Commission judge because of misconduct on Kim Worthy and her uh, support. Oh. Okay, sir. Uh, again, that's something you can raise with Judge Bryant when you see her in uh, in June. Also, with regard to the uh, bond redetermination date, that will be Wednesday, should you not post. If you post, you don't have to worry about it. If you don't post, that will be bond redetermination on Wednesday morning in front of Judge McConico here in 36th District Court. Thank you, sir. You you step step I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but the last thing he said was, do you guys accept credit cards? Credit card. you so I guess when it comes to getting out of jail on an affordable bond, it looks like he does consent to personal subject matter and territorial jurisdiction. Now, a lot of you may be wondering where all this stems from, because, you know, he is being charged with a crime that he committed allegedly, while in custody. So let me give you a small preview of part two so you can fully understand the gravity of the situation he's in. Okay, we're on the record with the people of the state of Michigan versus Cardinal Michael McCurry in all over case letters, 2305 Mr. McCurry is charged with count one, assault and murder, count two, assault and murder, Count three, weapons, firearms, possession by a felon. Count four, weapons, ammunition, possession by a felon. Count five, assault with a dangerous weapon, going to assault. Count six, seven, eight, and nine, weapons, going firearm. Also, count ten, weapons, going firearm. Set for a motion here today. Appearances. Edwin Sawaki, B548 today, appearing on behalf of the people. Mr. McCurry, please. Colonel Michael McCurry, Eel, all lower case. Acting appropriate for signing on the Michigan Constitution in 1963, Article 1, Section 13. So you're being charged with assault with intent to commit murder, regular assault, and a whole bunch of felon in possession of firearms. Are you sure you really want to represent yourself? Now, I said earlier in the video that quoting MCL 767.24 was going to bite him in the ass, specifically by subsection 6, which states that the state of Michigan has 10 years before the statute of limitations runs out on the crime of assault with intent to commit murder. So your argument that the crime took place six and a half years ago is a non-starter to begin with. Okay, so that's the actual end of today's video. We'll see you in the next one for part two and the following for part three. If you liked today's video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. But don't forget to leave a comment below and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss the follow-up. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.